So when you heard the term believable film look, all of a sudden you probably think of 16 millimeter, got a lot of halation and a lot of artifacting happening. That's not what I'm talking about. The Wolf of Wall Street is also shot on film. So the grain is not out of control. The artifacting is not out of control. Those things are just kind of played out. So what we're going to learn here is how to create a believable film look in 2023. And let's jump in. All right, so now we're inside Resolve and I'm going to show you two different techniques to get the believable film look inside Resolve for free. So let's start with the first one. We're going to create about six nodes. The first one I'm going to call in and that's just basically inputting the right information. So Resolve understands what's going on. We're going to tell it which camera the footage is coming from and then which color space you want to work in. So I'm going to go ahead and drop color space transform. And then here we're just going to select Canon Cinema gamut this footage is shot on canon eos r5 so anyone who has problem with me using alexa or red footage that's not what's happening here and then for the input gamma we're going to select canon log 2 for the output color space we're going to select davinci white gamut and then for the gamma we're going to select davinci intermediate so that's the color space we're going to work in then all the way over here i'm going to drop the color space again and because our output here is davinci white gamut here our input is going to be DaVinci White Gamut because we now want to convert this back into Rec. 709. But we're going to do it in an interesting way. So in Resolve, you have these LUTs for free under Film Looks. OK, and let's kill this so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And these are the LUTs. All right. And if I were to just drop this on and you can see on your screen what's happening, it just doesn't feel right. It's too crunchy, right? So there is a proper way to using this LUT or these LUTs. And the ones that we're gonna be using are gonna be in Rec. 709 for color space. So to bring this in properly, we're gonna have to change the color space to Rec. 709. And then the gamma needs to be Cineon Film Log, okay? And these LUTs are meant to go with a film scan, all right? And usually a generic film scan gamma would be Cineon Film Log. So once we set that up, it looks kind of weird, but don't worry. Now, when we go to the next node and we drop in one of these LUTs, you see now everything is looking proper. Now, there are three different flavors for each of these LUTs. So D55 refers to a warmer temperature. Then you have D60, which is neutral, and then D65, which is cooler. So we're just going to go with the neutral to start with. This is a pretty good starting point. Yes, it doesn't look ideal like what it should be, but that's pretty easy to fix that because we can go in our primaries node right here. And then what I can do here is I can use my uh, HDR palette offset, which works like stops in your camera. And I can just go under the global exposure and I can bring this down. So how far do we want to go? Like maybe something like one stop, right? Like if we drop it by a stop, it looks pretty good. All the information came in. You can see it like in the sky, the lights, the skin tones, everything is in a really good spot. We can even see it in our scopes too. Everything is sitting right in the middle. Things are looking juicy. Now, the problem that I have here is just focus on this area right here and see like how the colors are just blown out and they look weird because if I were to turn this off and now show you, look at this blue. And then if I punch in and show you this, it's looking incorrect. That's not how it should be. And that's one of the issues that I've seen using Resolve's built-in LUTs. So to counter that, what we can do is this. I can just create another version. I can go to this node, reset that, and then we can just delete this node and then reset this. I'm going to go under LUTs and this time we're going to use my flavor of the 2383s and we're going to use DaVinci White Gamut K2383, which is Kodak 2383, the Rec. 709 flavor. So if I double click on it and now we come out of it, look at first of all, it already looks so much better than what this looked like, especially before this. So like when we drop the LUT with the Cineon technique, the, the Resolve LUT compared to this LUT. But more importantly, look at that blue right there. You see how it's cracked and looks so bad compared to like this LUT, like my LUT where everything is protected and it's a much better starting point. This LUT is included in my masterclass. And before you roll your eyes, just give me a second. First of all, we're doing the biggest sale of the year, $400 off if you sign up between now until July 4th. And 
Let me just give you three reasons why you should join this masterclass. Number one, you're getting 30 plus hours of on-demand content that you can watch whenever you like. Number two, we do weekly competitions where you get tailor-made feedback. There's not a single course out there that offers this service. And number three, you become part of the community that has over 6,000 members. And a lot of our members are working with tier one brands such as Nikon, Porsche, Company3, DJI, F1, and the list goes on. To top it all off, I'm throwing in a 30-day money-back guarantee so you got absolutely nothing to lose. Link is gonna be up top and in the description. Check it out, sign up for the masterclass before the offer ends. Let's get back to the video. Now at this stage, what I can do is I can go under my primaries. I can just take my contrast slider and I can start cranking it. I'm just looking at my girl, okay? I'm looking at my girl and I'm just like really trying to find a pretty solid starting point, okay? So even if I keep it somewhere around here, I do before and after, the information is still intact right? The highlights and shadows and everything, but everything has like a really good weight now, because if we punch into our girl, you can see like the colors belong, right? There's a perfect wraparound of all the colors and that's where I would leave it. Now, the two additional steps that you have to do to make this film look believable, number one is going to be your halation. That's one of the characteristics of the film negative. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to type in halation. We're gonna drop this on. And when you first drop on this effect, it looks very cheesy and weird. So we're gonna go through some of these parameters and perfect that. So the first one is to control the threshold, okay? So I'm just gonna keep the threshold pretty tight, all right? And then the second one is going to be your spread. The spread is really, really fake. So I'm gonna just go pretty tight on that. And right now my focus is right in these areas, okay? Like right here. So if I do before, and after it's making a pretty big difference, but now I want to keep going in the spread and then maybe I can open up my threshold a little bit, right? But mostly my problem is with the spread and now it's looking pretty good. I can even leave it somewhere around here. It looks really, really nice. Most of our job as colorists is to be the tastemaker, okay? You can apply the same effect even if it's free, make it look like a million bucks if you just know what you're doing. We're going to move on to the next crucial stage of getting a believable film look and that is going to be grain now you can use grain available in this preset right here you can check this on but i feel like it's too caked on it doesn't look good and the parameters are not very granular whereas if i go here and type in grain and drop on film grain right here now what you can see is we can just click on 16 millimeter grain here and let's just go with something heavy like 16 millimeter 500T. And just you can see how good this looks. And one, we can leave this on or let's just say if the producer is just like, hey, can we split the difference? Can we just go kind of easy on that? So what we can do is we can go under the grain size and kind of cut it in half. So something like this. And then we can go under the grain strength and we can do a similar thing, kind of pull it back. And now if I do before and after, if I really punch in right here, even on YouTube, you should be able to see it. So this is before and then this is after. So it's very, very subtle. But if I do a playback, it looks really good. And again, these two things are absolutely crucial. It's not just the LUT, but LUT is a super, super important part of it. So let's call it show LUT. So at this point, you know, somebody might be saying, well, you know, you just applied the LUT and all these plugins, like where does the colorist chops come in? And that's where we do all of our magic in the primary node. OK, so here what we can do is this. One thing that I'm noticing is that there is way too much pink in the asphalt that I'm just not a massive fan of. So the easy fix is to go under my HDR palette in the global offset. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull out some of that like magenta. Right. So I just want to maybe go in this direction and maybe not as much. And we keep it somewhere around here. And if I do before and after, like if I just turn this off and on, you can see the difference that we're making, right? So this is before, this is after, big difference. The sky is still looking good. Everything else is still in there looking perfect. Now we can just go in our lift gamma gain. And what we can do is I can pull my lift down to this bluish green. And then I can take my gain and add some warmth. OK, and then what I can do is I can just use my gamma and kind of find the middle ground. And basically, when I'm using my gamma, 
I'm just keeping an eye on this area right here to kind of balance everything out, okay? And I like where everything is sitting right now. So if I do before and after, you can see the difference, like how much purple and pink we had before that we weren't even focusing on to what we ended up with, which looks so much nicer. Now we can go in our hue versus hue, and I can just take my yellows and I can crank them up and you can just look at the lights, what it's doing. So like, I don't want to overdo it, but even if we do something like this, just a little bump, like it just creates more color separation in a very organic way possible, okay? So we can actually just park it here. Your touch as a colorist comes from this node right here, right? So sure, you know, anybody can apply a LUT. And the problem is like most of the people out there are teaching you how to apply a LUT and they kind of just end the tutorial here. Like, hey, see, like you applied Kodak 2383, everything looks great, like done and done. But this one node made all the difference in the world. Guys, if you're enjoying the content, then smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already hit the bell icon, make sure to check out the course. Link is in the description. I hope you join FCM and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.